Welcome back, mask nerds, to another mask review video. Today, quarter mask elastomerics. What are they? What are the top ones that I've tested? And how do they compare against other respirators out there, like disposable ones like N95? Is it worth the extra cost? Cover it today. So what is a quarter mask elastomeric? Well, let's start with the last word, elastomeric. That means that these masks all feature a squishy seal surface. This one, the flow mask, which we'll review here today, all feature this soft, in this case, silicone seal, which the idea behind it is that because they have this soft, conformable material, it can provide a better seal to your face and the unique geometry that we all have in our faces. Now, a quarter mask means about how it seals. In this case, it seals above the chin. So the seal surface, including the nose and stuff, is sealing between your lips and the chin. So that's what makes it a quarter mask. Now, that's in contrast to, let's say, a half, a half mask design, like this Draeger P100, which you might have seen in another video. Now, this also elastomeric squishy seal, but it is a half mask, meaning it seals to the bottom of my chin here. And so that's the, primarily the difference. Quarter, half mask seal below the chin, and a quarter mask is going to seal along the chin surface. All right, let's jump into the review section. First up on that is the Invo mask. Now this comes from SleepNet. Uh, they're a manufacturer, I think prior to this, of CPAP style devices, and then a few years back, even before the pandemic, started getting into the respiratory protection space. Now this particular mask costs uh, $79 uh, with replaceable filter elements at $2 each. This mask's calling card is its gel seal. So well, it's elastomeric, it's not quite like others that use silicone or TPU. This uses this gel material, which is like encapsulated, a gel material encapsulated in like a thin plastic seal. So you do get a lot of conformable material to your face, uh, and hopefully, you know, the gel, gel holds together. Which so far in my test seems to be pretty robust, but I could imagine that this on a work site could be problematic, that you could cut that on accident. But for COVID stuff like that and everyday use, I think it could easily last years. Now these masks all kind of feature the same design with they have a replaceable front filter element that's attached to a primarily plastic like base portion of it and then the seal is attached to that. So replacement of the filter elements. Now this mask actually goes together quite well and on camera it's always hard while trying my best to pop it loose. It always makes me a little nervous when I pop this one because it has really positive engagement on the way together but the removal always takes a little bit more effort. Now in this case the, re the, the filter element is replaceable. You can just get a new one of these. I do like it for install. They do have this like little round here. This particular particular cover is the is the valve uh, plug. So this particular respirator also features an exhalation valve. You can either have a plug to plug it or you can use the plugged cover. So if you have universal masking, you can talk a, stick a plug in it, prevent your exhalation valve from working. And if you don't then, or if you're on a construction site or using it for another application, it will have an exhalation valve. Um, so that's quite nice. Now the filter material in this uh, just sets in here. It aligns to that exhalation valve. And this is the one thing that I like about this mask. The build quality on this mask is really, really good. When you look at the mold materials, on this mask, uh, the quality of it is quite well. I mean, you, like to get transparent masks that look like just the surface finish of this, like there's a lot of mold prep that went into that. Really, it's a sign of a really quality product. The other thing that I really liked about it is the positive engagement when you do the filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this on camera for you. So I'll go ahead and put it all together and I'm gonna catch it on audio. So when you click these together, it's very clear to you that the filter is engaged. So here we go, ready? One, two, and here we go for the last one. Oops, let's see. Oh, of course on camera. Here we go. There we go. There's the last one. Uh, there, it has really positive engagement and really you know that there is a really attached. Now, in terms of performance in my test with my test aerosol, on this one I got 97.91% filtration efficiency. And the time to breathe test I got 6.76 seconds, which translates to about 153 pascals. So it's kind of in the middle of the road of breathability, but filtration efficiency is pretty good. Now, in terms of long-term review, uh, this mask, I thought, was the most comfortable for the first hour. Really, like the first time it's on your face, super, super comfortable, but then it kind of fell off after that. I had primarily two, two complaints. Now, because of my particular chin to nose distance, when I wear this mask, the tip of my nose happens to rub against one of the middle bars. Not all the time, but just very, very glancing on it. And at the end of the day, the tip of my nose just was a little red from rubbing against that. So one of the improvements I think this mask could have is having a little bit more space for the nose by either removing this bar, giving you just a few millimeters extra. I mean, I could have took a cutter to it as well, but I chose not to. Um, the other complaint that I had on this particular mask is the gel seal is very, very comfortable. However, because quarter masks sit right here, 
And this one does have some good motion, but just the texture and kind of like a sticky, I wouldn't say it's sticky necessarily, but in terms of like the friction of that seal just dragging here, I did get a little bit of irritation here, which was a little bit problematic. So overall, first hour, great. And then some of those two issues kind of brought it down. And since it's not the most breathable, I kind of noticed that as well. Okay, next up is the flow mask. Now this particular mask uh, is not NIOSH approved yet, like the Invo mask before it. Uh, retails for $89.99, uh, and the filters are a little bit less expensive at a dollar for each filter. Now this particular mask, its calling card, is uh, of similar design and shape of the Invo, in fact the, the similar sizing, uh, but this uses silicone instead of the gel seal, and so you get that compliance of the silicone layer uh, and ter it, to, to provide the seal to your face. Now this mask, like the Invo, also has a removable filter element, which I'll pop loose here. I had this one upside down in here just to block the name, but I'll show you. And so you have an outer portion, a filter material, and the case. Now, one complaint I had on the assembly versus the Invo is that on this mask design, they have two notches on each side that you're supposed to align the filter to. So you set them in there uh, and you kind of tuck them in there. And I kind of had trouble in the past doing this to getting it to stay in there when I'm holding it. In fact, there's an example. One of the things I actually found that was easier, and I think what they might consider doing, is switching those tabs to be, instead of on this part where it's curved and it wants to fall off all the time, to put those features in this one. What I found on this one is that it's much easier to drop it into this portion of the mask. You can see that sits in there very nicely. So putting those alignment features would be there, because then it's much easier to align it. Like the Invo, you can just kind of hold it all together. Now, it doesn't mean I couldn't do it. I, could, I got it successfully sealed many times, but sometimes I'd have to remove the straps to do that. In terms of performance, now this mask does come with two different filters. The, the, they offer the everyday filter, which in my test aerosol with my face came in at 93.93%, the time to breathe at 2.42 seconds, which translates to about 62 pascals. Now they do offer the what they call the pro filter. Uh, that really increases significantly the protection. It goes in, it came in at my test aerosol, my face at 98.89% with a time to breathe at 6.51 seconds, which translates to about 145 Pascal. So again, the protection's there, but the breathability suffers. And if you want the breathability, then you have to sacrifice some of the protection. So that's kind of a little bit of a bummer with the flow mask. Now, the other, uh, in terms of long-term comfort, this was, I think, overall more comfortable than the Invo mask, even though the Invo is more comfortable over the first hour, this one can tend and maintain its performance kind of the whole way. However, I had one issue with this mask. The first being that when, without the condensation insert inserted into the mask, I would get a leak right here on my nose. When I wear this mask, it just leaks right here. Now to solve that, I insert the condensation filter into the mask and that provides a little bit of additional push out because one of the disadvantages of this particular style of mask with the hard case and only a small amount of silicone is that there's only so much compliance that you can get. Uh, you basically see like once I, I can only get the amount of compliance that's built into before I hit the hard plastic. And in this case, the compliance just hits right against my nose right here and that's all I can get. Pulling it harder does not provide a better seal. Now using the, uh, the condensation sponge that they provide, I could kind of tuck it up into the nose area of the mask. And I'll just do that quickly here on the video. I'm trying to do my best to make it. It's not actually that difficult to install. Uh, and I would get it in there. That solves the seal problem. But what I had happen over the day is over talking and moving is that the seal would kind of pop down like that and it would fall on my nose and the counter kind of rejigger it and put it back up in there. So that was kind of an annoyance. The other annoyance that I had with this mask is that because of the de seal design with a quarter mask, when you talk, and I'm gonna exaggerate, it's not normally like this, that the seal rolls onto my chin and you can kind of hopefully see that in the camera. And so that rolling action, because I shockingly talk a lot of my job too, caused some irritation at my jaw. And so that was one of the disadvantages I had. So I felt like the, the two biggest ones is that I, without the sponge, I couldn't get it to seal here and the rolling of the jaw. Breathability again, middle of the road. Now the last mask, and also the cheapest, uh, is the Breathe, Proshentex Breathe. And they do have a newer version called the Breathe 2, which I unfortunately had not had the opportunity to test. Now this mask sells for $49 Canadian, which uh, if you were to get in the US, but you can't because of some import issues, it would run $36.39. And they sell replacement filters at roughly uh, 30 Canadian for I believe 10 of them. So that's like uh, just like $2 a filter. Um, so these particular masks is a little different than the other two in that it does have a hard plastic support for the filter, which will show, but it has way more silicone. In fact, most of the mask body itself is silicone, as you can see here. Now, what I translated to me was I didn't have the leak. And one of the things I found is that, that you could kind of tighten it up a little bit more to get a little bit more 
uh, sealing. So that actually I thought was a big advantage to the percent Texas. The amount of silicone makes it quite uh, much more, I think, I think based on my experience, much a little bit more tolerable to differences in geometry because they don't have a hard plastic. And this, like other masks, features a replaceable filter material. You pop this front cover off. Now I think I have an older particular version of the cover. They have one with a little bar across it. Um, I think I just got an older version of it. So you can basically, they pop the filter in there and then set it down just like we did with the flow mask and the invo. They kind of all feature the same flat mass, the flat ceiling area, pop it down there and then snap it all together. Now this particular mask comes with two different filters. They call the bio aerosol filter and my test conditions with the bio aerosol, I get 81.19% filtration efficiency, filtration efficiency. Again, my face, my test aerosol and a time to breathe at 2.84 seconds, which translates to about 109 pascals. So, pretty, or excuse me, 2.86, 2.64 seconds or 2.84 seconds, which translates to 67 pascals, one of the most breathable ones that we had, fortunately, really compromising with the filtration efficiency. If you use their particulate filter, that one comes in at 96.44% filtration efficiency with a time to breathe at 5.13 or about 109 pascals. So more breathable, but filtration efficiency is kind of not ideal there as well. In terms of all day comfort, this is the one that I actually found to be the most comfortable. And the reason is, is that it had the same advantages of the flow mask in terms of the comfort of the silicone, which I think is slightly better long-term for an eight hour wear versus the other one. And it's not really a quarter mask. I would almost argue it's a three eighths mask. What the heck, what do you mean, Aaron? Well, quarter mask is here and half mask is here. So I'm gonna argue that this is a three eighths mask and that it's halfway between. When you see this mask on my face, notice that it sits just right at the below my chin. What this translates to is when we do the same jaw motion, it doesn't roll as much. It actually flexes more at the top here as well. And so to me, that actually provided a little bit more comfort. I didn't feel that rolling that I did with the flow mask or the drag that I felt with the Invo mask. So actually of the most, this was actually the most comfortable, but unfortunately it's not available in the US. So with all that said, what's my favorite? Well, to be honest with you, I had a hard time. If you're in the US, and you really only have the choices between these are the most two common quarter mask elastomeric, the flow mask or the Invo. And if I had to pick one, I give the credence to the flow mask because it's one features two sizes. And it's actually one of the things we'll talk about is one of the cons to all of these later, which is that once you buy these, you're locked in. They're 80 bucks and they're not, or $70 or $60. They're not returnable. So if it doesn't fit you, you're just out the money. So the fact that the flow mask has two sizes, a small medium nose bridge and a medium high nose bridge, I think improves the probability that it's gonna fit you. But they are both very, very similar in terms of performance, in terms of fit. It really just comes down to which one fits you better. And unfortunately, I can't tell which one fits you better. You have to buy it and try it yourself, which means you gotta commit 80 bucks. So I do give the slight advantage to the flow as that I think it's gonna be more likely that this one will fit you versus the single size available for the Invo. But I think both of them have the same problem, which is that you have to buy them, try them, and if they don't fit, you're just out the money. Now, if you're in Canada, I will say that the Prishintex is the one I would probably go with, especially now that they have the Breathe 2 available. This is an add-on that they features with more filter area, which means better breathability, and they're gonna get some better filtration efficiency, and the data that they're claiming shows that improvement as well. So if you're gonna go the route of the Prishintex, which I think for the price is a great deal, at 49 Canadian is definitely the cheapest. I wish we could get these in the US, because that Breathe 2 add-on I think will solve some of the breathability issues and filtration efficiency issues. Um, so to me, this design is actually the one that I would pick if I could pick all of them, but you can't, you can only get this in Canada. So okay. now the tough question, how do these stack up against the other options out there like disposable N95s or even a half mask elastomeric? And I'll do my best to try to answer that. Now, one of the challenges that all the quarter mask designs have is that they have a flat filter media that's kind of put across it. And so the filter, the, the breathable filter area is dictated really by the size of the mask. Now, one of the things I'd like to compare and I thought was interesting, and I'm gonna don the V-Flex as an example, is that the relative filter area difference between these is kind of hard to tell, but it actually is quite an advantage to this disposable V-Flex, for example. So this particular mask, to make it a real apples to apples comparison, I donned the mask and then I marked exactly where I could best estimate the mask was touching my face and I cut it out to get an estimate of the breathable area, the effective breathable area of the mask. And so for the 9105 V-Flex, this is what I ended up with. Now if we compare that to the Invo mask filter, you can see that it's quite smaller. In fact, I had the measurement, I actually performed the measurement, I got 165 centimeters squared of effective filter area for the V-Flex on my face and for the 
uh, Invo mask, I got 65 centimeters. So it's almost, you know, two and a half times more filter area with this, which is what drives that breathability. So all of these masks have the problem that when you just use, you know, flow mask is the same design, is that you have the single filter area, you only have so much filter area to work with. And so what happens is you begin to have to sacrifice breathability due to that. So that's kind of a disadvantage to them all is that they're not the most breathable options. Now, relative to, let's say, a half mask elastomeric, which have the advantage of looking not nearly as, you know, the quarter masks are much more subtle than this mask, but these have the advantage of filter cartridges, so they can take care of getting the filter area as well. So the breathability is kind of one of the disadvantages of a quarter mask. Now, the other thing that uh, all of these masks feature uh, is that because they use a hard plastic shell, they reduce the ability to hear you, right? They, the, the volume of your voice is going to be reduced because some of that sound is absorbed by the plastic. So, for example, if I just keep talking, and then put on the Invo mask, you can probably hear the difference in my voice as I take it on and take it off. It does block some of the sound. And even to myself, I felt like I was talking louder in these masks to make up for the fact, like I could hear that in my own ears that it was muffling it. Now, that is not unique to quarter masks. It's one of the reasons I really don't like half masks, both the appearance of them, but also because they're very hard to communicate in. Even if they have a voice diaphragm, you can really tell the difference in my voice, what happens when we wear a half mask elastomeric. And that's been one of the big things. A mask you need to be breathable, comfortable, and for me, I need to be able to clearly communicate it. Now that's most, you know, let's very, very reduced in terms of disposables like the like the 9105 V Flex here, where you can see after I've donned it, you really can't tell that much difference in my voice. And if I take it on or and then I take it off, you really can't tell that there's a huge difference in the audibility of my voice. So that's kind of one of the other disadvantages is in terms of audible sound. Now, the last issue that I have with the style of mask is they also aren't the lightest. And it's most noticeable in some ways on your face, and this one's the most noticeable, is that they can kind of wiggle and wobble on your face. This is the case with the Prescentex is probably the most noticeable, so I'm using it. And that's probably because of a couple of things. One, they use an elastomeric seal, and they're not the lightest. Now, the, flow, the Prescentex is the lightest at 63 grams, the Flow Mask at 65, and the Invo comes in at a whopping 99 grams. It's not zero weight. You do notice it on your face. And that's in comparison to, let's say, a disposable that's nine grams. So basically, the Invo Mask is like 10 times more weight on your face. Now, it's not like it's enough that you're really going like, to strain your neck, but you do feel that there's some mass sitting off the front of your face, and that can be a little bit distracting. So the question is, should I go to a quarter mask? And this is, to me, one of the hardest things. I don't have a good answer. In general, I think it's a value question. To me, for the Invo mask like this that comes in at $79 with a $2 filter element replacement, your total buy-in to try this, just to try it, is 80 bucks. Your total buy-in to buy, let's say, a 9205 Plus, depending on the size, you might be able to get them for $2 to $10 to dry a box. So you're out 80 bucks if this doesn't fit, you're out 10 bucks if this doesn't fit. So that's hard to justify that cost, especially if you're not guaranteed to fit. And because of COVID and stuff, you can't return the mask. So that's been one of my big hesitancies about recommending these quarter mask elastomerics is that they're not really more breathable, they're not really any cheaper. The question is, do they provide a better seal? And without some mechanism to check your fit, I can't guarantee that. And if you buy the mask and it doesn't fit, you can't return it. So it's been really hard for me to recommend these. So I really at this point say, maybe these, you know, the problem is N95 disposables are an insane value. For $2 for let's say like an Aura or 50 to 80 cents for a V-Flex, these are an amazing price. That's cheaper than just the replacement filters for these. Now, in theory, this does provide you the ability to get a better fit, face fit. And I think that's the kind of mechanism, but without commonly available fit testing methods, then it's kind of hard to justify this. So what I think is, if you're thinking about upgrading, first focus on seeing if you can find a mechanism to do a fit testing. There are some do-it-yourself examples. There's also services you can provide. You can buy the Gerson fit tester. It's available from Project Nano 95. So if you want to upgrade, I think first thing is focus on a mechanism that you can check fit. Once you know you got fit, then you can think about elastomerics, which in theory can provide even a better fit, but you still need to check it. So do I recommend them for everybody? Not yet. I think we need some tools to first check out fit, and there are some, some disadvantages to them. I think they are the way we want to see masks go. I think elastomeric solutions are definitely the way we need to go. So we're there, they got the hints of what we want, but they're not all in one package yet. And the pricing is a little high. So it's hard for me to say which one's the best, or which you should switch, but I wanted to give you an overview so you as a person can at least have all the information to make the decision on your own. Thanks for watching this and we'll catch you on the next video.